Ever since internet was invented, we human beings have been creating the majority of the data on the internet, but it is changing really fast and it is expected that in the future, it's going to be the things that are going to generate the majority of the data on the internet. We can see IoT devices in many different industries. In healthcare, we have wearable health monitors, for example, and they can collect some information such as the heart rate or blood pressure of the patients. And because they're connected to the internet, they can send all these information to the doctors and they can remotely monitor their patients. In agriculture, there are different types of sensors that can collect some information about the content of the soil, for example, or maybe the temperature, the humidity, or the rainfall of that particular area. All of that can help to automate farming, or in other industries as well. But probably the most common place that we can see them today is in our homes, or I better say smart homes. Now, the majority of the smart home IoT devices that we have today, uh, let's use an LED light bulb as an example, um, they use Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. There are other IoT devices that use different methods, different protocols as well. But in this video, we're going to focus on the ones that use Wi-Fi and see what is good and maybe not too good about them. Now, the Wi-Fi smart devices usually use the 2.4 GHz band to connect to the network and not the 5 GHz band, at least not right now. So, for example, if I want to connect my smart LED light bulb to the network, I should somehow enter my 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi name and password on the light bulb so it can connect. Obviously, I can't do it directly, but I can use my smartphone to do that. Well, each manufacturer might use a slightly different method, but what usually happens is that I install the light bulb app on my phone and then connect my phone to the default Wi-Fi of the light bulb. This allows me to enter my 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi name and password, and the light bulb can use this information to connect. And after it is successfully connected, I can control it either using the app on my phone or if it supports one of those virtual home assistants, maybe Amazon Alexa, with my voice commands to um, Alexa, turn on light one. Okay. Now let's take a little bit closer look at our Wi-Fi IoT devices. As we already saw in the case of the LED light bulb, it wasn't that difficult to connect it to the network. Besides, there was no need to have a hub and I could directly connect it to my wireless router, which is good. Now, the quality of that connection is important too, because if it is not good, then even if I say, Alexa, turn on light one. Light one isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. Then as we saw, it might not work, so it's a very good idea to make sure my network, especially my wireless network, is in good shape. But how can I do that? Well, with a little bit of good network design. For example, let's say there's a dead spot in my house and I want to use a smart LED light bulb there. Unfortunately, this light bulb is not going to be able to connect to my network and basically not going to work, at least not as a smart device. So maybe the wireless router is not installed correctly or in the right location. And by just relocating it, I might be able to fix this problem. Or maybe it is installed correctly and in the right place. It is just the house which is big and I need to have a secondary device to be able to extend the range. Or sometimes it could be connected to the network, but the quality of this connection might not be very good, maybe due to an interference with some other wireless network. In that case, I might want to change my Wi-Fi channel to something else where there is no or less interference. I personally designed my network in a way that the whole 2.4 GHz band is actually dedicated to the IoT devices. And all the non-IoT devices, for example, laptops, smartphones, and tablets, they use the 5 GHz band. Also, about once a week or so, I do a little bit of site survey to learn about the channel utilization in my area. And I make sure I'm using a channel for my wireless network, which is not busy. I have about 25-ish uh, IoT devices and so far haven't had any major connection issues. 
Now let's say we have fixed the coverage and connection quality issues. There is still something else here that I need to keep in mind, which is the security of my smart IoT devices. Although that smart LED light bulb might look very similar to a regular LED light bulb, it is different because it is connected to the internet. And that means if it is not secured, then hackers might be able to hack it and even use it to access my local network, where my more sensitive data is located. So security is something very very important here. First things first, regardless of having IoT devices or not, it is always a good idea to make sure my network is overall secure. For example, if I have a wireless router as the heart of my network, then the router itself is secured with a strong username and password. So I need to make sure that I have changed the default username and password to something more secure. Also, I need to make sure the firmware of the router is always up to date. The Wi-Fi is secured with a strong authentication, encryption and password, and there is an active firewall protecting the network, preferably a next-gen firewall, which I can take advantage of some of its useful features, such as the intrusion prevention system. So that was general network security, but the IoT device itself should be secure too. And that's why I would only consider to buy reputable brand name IoT devices. The ones that I think they care about the security of their products and their customers. For example, they make sure the firmware is secured and in case they find any vulnerability, they would provide updates to fix it. Because there are all kinds of unbranded IoT devices that you might be able to find on eBay, for example. They're obviously cheaper and it might be very tempting to buy them, but it is not recommended and using them could be a recipe for disaster. Now, another thing that I can do and I should do to add more security is to make sure that I'm using a separate Wi-Fi for my IoT devices only and make sure this Wi-Fi doesn't have access to my personal Personal Wi-Fi or even LAN. So in case a hacker can hack one of my IoT devices, they cannot use that to access my personal network. There are different ways that I might be able to do that, maybe by using VLANs. But a simpler way is to use a guest Wi-Fi for my IoT devices and make sure the guest Wi-Fi doesn't have access to the main Wi-Fi. I've already talked about it in that video and feel free to check it out if you're interested. Now let's quickly recap what we talked about in this video. Our interaction with the internet has been mainly through our computers, tablets, and smartphones, right? But nowadays there are other types of devices, or I better say things, that connect to the internet too. These are called IoT devices or Internet of Things. They can help us to automate different industries or even build smart homes. Now the IoT devices can use different ways to connect to the internet but in this video we only looked into the ones that use Wi-Fi good old Wi-Fi and realized if I have a well designed and well secured network then they should work fine besides they don't need to have a hub and can directly connect to my wireless router so if I take those things into consideration then I can enjoy my IoT and smart home devices which can make life much easier around the house Thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you soon. Uh, Alexa, turn off the studio lights. Okay.